This peace process only began a few months ago. This is certainly the most important step in this particular peace process, but ceasefires have been declared before. They failed. There is plenty of optimism about this one because it appears to be tied into efforts to renegotiate the entire foundation of the Turkish state via efforts to draw up a new constitution. So there's plenty of optimism. But it's one thing to declare a ceasefire. It's one thing to declare a withdrawal of forces. It is another to see that actually implemented. He wants great, a greater role for the Kurdish people within the Turkish state. For that to be recognized, embedded or chiseled or set in stone in a new constitution which is currently being debated uh, by members of parliament. In particular, uh, the Kurdish people, the PKK, want uh, the right to education and justice in their own language. And they also want something they declare as uh, democratic autonomy, although they haven't really defined exactly what they mean by that. And what's the general view, James, in Turkey about this? Do many Turkish people also want to see peace, or are they going to see this as caving into some demands? Uh, almost everyone you meet in Turkey wants to see peace. Whether they want to negotiate with Mr. Erçelan himself is, I think, uh, something different. But I think certainly among the government, there was a realization that if they were to try to carry out a serious peace process, then they had no choice but to deal with Mr. Erçelan himself, because despite the fact that he's been in prison for 14 years, he remains the undisputed leader of the Kurdish rebels and also of the Kurdish people in Turkey. In other words, if there is to be a peace deal, it has to go through him.